So I'm going to be talking about load balancing. So it's a project that uh, was done jointly with uh, Robert Kleinberg from Cornell, who was visiting us for a year. Uh, Steve Rumble from uh, YouTube, uh, at Google, and Aaron Archer, who's also on the research team. Uh, the new load balancing algorithm is called Prequel. And unlike a lot of load balancing algorithms, it does not actually balance load, as in doesn't balance CPU utilization. It doesn't try to equalize it. It does something else. Performs uh, quite well, and we've deployed it quite widely uh, across Google, and I'm going to talk about all that. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, what am I referring to when I talk about load balancing? I'm talking about uh, load balancing inside the data center between uh, one job to another job, which is basically a set of client tasks talking to server tasks. It's local load balancing, not, not a cross-WAN, just uh, in the same low latency data center. Um, so typically, there's hundreds of clients talking to hundreds of servers. And the goal is to minimize latency uh, for the queries. And the queries are typically uh, short running queries in milliseconds, up hundreds of milliseconds. Sometimes uh, multiple seconds, we can do that as well. Uh, <clears throat> the basic uh, idea is to use the power of D choices paradigm, which is uh, comes from uh, putting balls into bins and uh, the, the result there, and this is not, you know, this is a well-known result uh, that if you uh, look at sample two bins and pick the least loaded one, you'll do exponentially better than just uh, picking random bins and putting balls in, into those bins as far as minimizing the maximum loaded uh, bin. And so this load balancer uh, essentially probes, uh, let's say, two random servers. Uh, picks the best one uh, according to some criteria which I'll describe, and then assigns a query to, um, to that server. Uh, now, we don't actually wait for these probes to complete. Um, uh, we don't, we don't, we, it's, not, it's not that the query arrives and we probe the servers and make a decision. Uh, one of the innovations here is uh, we are continuously probing in the background and keeping a uh, pool of available probes that we can use so that when a query comes, we can just immediately assign it to a server based on our pool of available probes. Uh, typically, there's about three probes per query sent, and they are triggered whenever a query comes. It triggers um, the sending of these three probes on another thread, so it's not, it's not blocking for that query. Uh, we can deploy prequel in a number of different ways. One of them is directly embedded as a client library um, talking to a server, which is the first case here. Uh, another use case is putting it into a balancer job. So if clients, for instance, are sending queries across data centers, uh, you would like to put a balancer inside the destination data center so that you could have local latencies for these probes once the queries arrive there, and then you decide on the final server once you land in, in the data center. Um, the other point to note is that you can deploy this load balancer. If you have a complicated stack of services talking to each other, you can deploy it in multiple points in, in, that, in that tree of services. It doesn't have to be everywhere. You can, you can just choose particularly impactful servers. Uh, at the very core, we are instrumenting the server with some signals that we use. And essentially, there are two signals. Uh, one is requests in flight of the server, which is the number of requests that have landed but not yet exited. So whenever a request comes, we just increment a counter and decrement it when it exits. Uh, at the same time, we're also tracking the latency of how long did that request take to process in the server. And so uh, we essentially measure the start and finish time and we do something, um, takes a little bit more explaining. We try to uh, keep a table of latencies based on at, at a particular request and flight level so that we get a load curve of what would your latency be at a given number of requests and flight that's at that server. And how do we use that information? So when a uh, client is continuously probing servers, it uh, collects the result, resulting probes into this probe pool. 
uh, we then apply this rule called the hot cold uh, lexicographic selection rule. We essentially categorize servers into cold and hot, and and we do that by deciding what is a request in flight level that, is, that corresponds to some percentile of servers. So if you're the hottest, uh, let's say 20% of the servers in the system, you're deemed as, uh, if, if you have the highest number of requests in flight, uh, in, if, if you're amongst the top 20% of servers in terms of requests in flight, you're deemed as a hot server, and we essentially exclude you from selection. Um, and then we pick from the cold servers the one with the lowest latency estimate. So the, the probes are feeding back for both the RIF and the latency estimate, and we just pick the one with the lowest. Now, if it so happens that all you're seeing is hot servers, um, because you only have a probe pool of limited size, let's say 16, so it's possible to just sample hot servers, you'll pick the one with the lowest request in flight. And that really uh, protects the system from overloading, putting additional requests in flight onto a server that's um, in the maximum one. Now, how do we manage these probes in the probe pool? Uh, well, they're generated asynchronously, and when they and we have a limited size for a probe pool, so uh, typically 16. So when a probe is generated and we get a response from a server, we put it into the pool if there's room, and if there isn't, then we replace an existing probe, and we have a number of mechanisms of deciding how to evict an existing probe. One of them is uh, if we have used, we keep track of how many times we've used a probe, and if it exceeds a use count, uh, we remove it. We also remove, uh, we can remove an oldest probe, which has been sitting around and has become stale. This information eventually becomes stale and uh, uncertain. And we also, uh, part of the time, remove the worst probe. So, by applying these three policies, we, we mitigate various issues. And I'll go into the remove worst one, which is the most tricky and interesting. Um, what can happen is if you have a pool of probes and you keep on selecting the best ones, you will get probes living in the probe pool that are the worst ones that are never used up. And, and they, they will um, not be used up until you have a burst of queries which consume the probes and you are forced to use them. And so if you don't remove the worst ones, you can violate the power of D guarantee. And uh, what we know is that, uh, so we essentially investigated this and uh, as long as you are removing the worst ones, you, you, you still get the power of D choices guarantees. Now, uh, going to the YouTube uh, deployment, which is uh, our first major system we deployed to in Google. Uh, previous to, to prequel being deployed, uh, YouTube was running weighted round robin, which is essentially balancing CPU uh, and the weight being uh, basically the query, inverse of query costs. So you'd put more traffic onto servers where queries are cheaper according to CPU load. And when we <clears throat> switched over from weighted round robin to prequel, basically all the percentiles of latency went down. The reason why this graph looks a little bit weird, that is the 99 percentile is sometimes uh, trading positions with the other percentile is that each percentile is normalized a little bit against itself, not against the other ones. But so, so just look at the um, same percentile before and after the prequel is turned on. So you can see a um, fairly dramatic reduction from, let's say, the 99 percentile going down from about 2 to a normalized value of 1.2. Uh, the other uh, metrics that we were interested in is uh, peak CPU load. Uh, so what happens is uh, if you have large CPU spikes, 
uh, you can go outside of the allocation that you have for the job, and that's actually what causes the latency. So by controlling very tightly um, the number of queries and the latency and so on, it actually also controls the CPU as indirectly. Uh, and it also, um, we very directly control the number of requests and flights, so that's a bottom graph basically showing that we cut out the um, tails in, in number of requests and flights on servers. One interesting outcome uh, was that we also reduced the RAM footprint of these jobs. When queries themselves occupy um, memory for processing and so on, so if you cut out the peaks of the number of queries being processed on a server, you can actually also reduce the peak RAM usage. Um, and so there was actually some RAM savings out of it as well. Uh, now I'm gonna go into some testbed results, which will explore various parameters of this algorithm and kind of give you an intuition of how it works in different circumstances. Um, now the testbed uh, is a typical Google Borg um, job uh, with the tasks running on machines that have many other tasks running on them and we only get a small slice of capacity on those machines and, and other processes we treat them, we, we consider them antagonists so they, they're filling up the available CPU capacity. And however, on some machines, there is actually some spare capacity that not all the tasks have used up. Which, which if, if you do your balancing well, you, you could potentially use for load spikes. And that's um, <clears throat> essentially what happens in this graph. So uh, here what we've done is, this is an experiment which is alternating between weighted round robin uh, in a short interval and switching to prequel. Uh, and we're essentially uh, ramping up the load from 75% to 175% of the, our allocation. Um, and you can see in all the, I'm sorry, I actually swapped the prequel and we and Robin around. <laughs> As you can see, it performs terribly, you should never use it. <laughs> um, no. Um, Yes, so, so the white uh, bars is where prequel is operating and weighted round robin is operating here where the latency is terrible. Um, so what happens is that once you get close to the alloc um, or start to exceed it, weighted round robin keeps trying to keep the CPU load equal and it runs into those machines that, where there's no further CPU to, uh, to go around because there are other jobs on it and gets high latency on those machines. But it's very good at keeping the CPU utilization equal, and I'll show you in the next graph. Whereas uh, prequel will just rebalance into those machines that have spare capacity, uh, that there is some idle capacity from other jobs. And so this time I got the labels right. Excellent. Um, so you can see here, this is the same experiment, but just looking at the distribution of CPU across machines. So you can see weighted round robin has a very tight distribution uh, as we ramp up the load. So it's really keeping the, the CPU even across machines. Um, whereas prequel is, is spreading around, trying to find those holes. Um, but as you saw, doing a much better job at minimizing latency, which is really the whole point of load balancing. Hence, you should not balance load. You should, you should minimize the latency. Uh, you might wonder how many probes should we be sending? Um, and we ran some many experiments trying to investigate what's a good probe rate. And it turns out if you probe two, if you send two or three probes per query across many different use cases, that, that is very robust. And so here we're basically varying the probe rate. And this is the green as a query rate. And this is the resulting latency. So the latency basically stabilizes at a low value at two or three uh, probes per query. Um, another parameter in, in this algorithm is, uh, I was saying that we have this hot cold selection rule which categorizes um, servers and it's based on 
the percentile of requests in flight on the, on the server. So one way you could dial it up is um, uh, dial it to 100%, meaning that all of the servers are hot, or dial it down to, to zero of it to indicate that none of the servers are hot and we're always balancing on latency or always, or in the other direction, it's always balancing a request in flight. So could one of those be better in isolation? Uh, well, it turns out that, it, that, that that's not tr true. There is a middle ground that's actually optimal, particularly in circumstances where uh, we have a mixture of different machine speeds. So here we have an experiment where we have some slow machines, some fast machines, and this is primarily due to architectural differences in, in our data centers. We have different generations of, of, of machines and some of them slightly faster uh, than others. Uh, and by being, by having sort of percentile around 90% or 99, we are sensitive to, to latency and request in flight. If you, if you are only looking at Latency. latency is a bit of a lagging indicator because we're estimating it over an average of many queries. And so, it, so only looking at that it is not ideal. Um, and having some reaction to request in flight uh, works better. Uh, we also compared it to many other algorithms out there, and there are many load balancing algorithms in this space. Um, and this is a summary, there's more details in the paper. Um, so this is running a similar experiment as the previous page, but 90% utilization and seeing the 90th and 99th percentile latencies. Uh, and we compared round robin, which is basically just going around the servers um, uh, you know, in a round robin fashion and random, uh, uniform random selection, weighted round robin, which is an algorithm I was t telling you about. Uh, least loaded is an interesting one. It's often used in industry where you are aware of how many requests you have outstanding to um, each server. The client looks at its own local count of outstanding requests and uh, picks the one that picks the server that has the lowest number of requests in flight, um, which is a little bit different from what we're doing where we're actually uh, probing the server to get its, um, the server's view of how many requests in flight it has from all clients. Um, and then there are some variations, at least loaded with power of two choices. That is same information, but you, you, you randomly pick two servers. Interesting that actually works better. Uh, there's a policy from uh, Microsoft proxy called YARP uh, that does power of two selection as well, and a um, fairly competitive uh, algorithm called C3 that does essentially, it, it has this formula for combining latency and, and RIF um, and queue size on, on the server, and it does pretty well. We actually fitted its um, scoring function into our probing mechanism um, to sort of bring them onto the sort of same baseline. Um, and, and as you can see, it does pretty well. And then that's prequel down the bottom here. Um, that's all. Thanks. Any questions?